This is Mr. Martin. These are video notes for pre-calculus honors. Uh, we're in section 7.3 and in this video we're talking about pra uh, partial fraction decomposition. So before we get into uh, what partial fraction decomposition is, let's take a look at uh, adding a couple of uh, fractions here. So we know in order to add or subtract fractions we need a common denominator. Um, we have a shortcut that uh, I like to use uh, when adding complex fractions. Uh, I call it the smiley face method. So we're going to multiply up and to the left. We're going to multiply up and to the right. And then our mouth of the smiley face is the two denominators. Uh, now this won't always give us the least common denominator. Uh, in this case it will, but it won't always. Um, but it will, however, always give you uh, the sum or the difference of the fraction. So let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to have x plus 2 times 2, so we'll distribute as we go. So that's going to be 2x plus 4. And then plus, since we're adding the fractions, I've got negative 1 times x minus 3, so that's going to be uh, minus x plus 3. And then I'll uh, multiply my denominators, x minus 3 and x plus 2. So if I go ahead and simplify, I have 2x minus x, which is just going to be x, and I have 4 plus 3, which is 7. And then I could go ahead and FOIL out the bottom, and that would give me x squared minus x minus 6. So this is a procedure that you should be familiar with when we talk about partial fraction decomposition. Now we're going to start here and end over here. So we're going to take a fraction and we're going to decompose it into separate fractions. And this is a technique that you're going to use when you get to calculus, uh, so it's important that you know how to do this. So um, we're going to look at two types of factors. We're going to look at linear factors and we're going to look at quadratic factors. So for linear factors, for each factor in the form of px plus q raised to the m, the partial fraction decomposition must include the following sum of m fractions. So you'll notice we have this um, factor px plus q this one is raised to the first, this one is raised to the second, and we would keep adding additional factors all the way up to px plus q to the m. And you notice we have uh, a1, a2, all the way up to am. Sometimes I'll use a, b, c, and d for these instead of um, just the same variable with subscripts. Uh, and the other thing you want to notice here is that these are linear factors. Even though this is a linear factor squared, it's still a linear factor. And the numerator's degree is going to be one less than the denominator's degree. So since here my linear factors have a degree of one, my numerators will have a degree of zero. So those are linear factors. Then when we have quadratic factors for each factor in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c raised to the n, the partial fraction decomposition must include the following sum of n fractions. So now you'll see I have my quadratic in the denominators. So here's my quadratic raised to the first, here's my quadratic raised to the second, all the way up to the quadratic raised to the n. And my factors in the numerator are all linear. Since my denominators are quadratic, my numerators have to be one degree less. So I have b sub 1 x plus c1, b sub 2 x plus c2, all the way up to b sub n x plus c sub n. And it looks a little confusing right now, but after you do a handful of examples, you should start to get the hang of it. Um, just make sure you're asking questions as you go. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at an example. Uh, this first one is for distinct linear factors. So the first thing that I like to do is uh, factor the denominator. 
So I've got x squared minus x minus 6. And let's see how this factors. I know these are going to both be x's. I need factors of 6 that add to negative 1. So let's try negative 3 and positive 2. So x squared, that would be minus 3 plus 2. So that would give me minus 1 and negative 3 times 2 is 6. All right, so we can break this down into partial fractions. 1 is going to have a denominator of x minus 3, and 1 is going to have a denominator of x plus 2, and then we can use whatever variables we want up here. We'll just use a and b. So we're going to decompose this fraction into two separate fractions. Um, since we could factor this uh, denominator into linear factors, x minus 3 and x minus 2, this is how we would break it up. Then what we need to do is we need to figure out what a and b are. So I'm going to multiply through by my denominator. So I'm going to multiply through by x minus 3 times x plus 2. Okay, make sure we distribute this whole thing here, here, and here. All right, so when I multiply my uh, denominator here, the denominator of the original fraction, by the original fraction, I'm simply left with x plus 8. When I multiply it by my second fraction here, the x plus or x minus 3s will cancel out. So I'm left with a times x plus 2. And then for the last one, I'm left with b times x minus 3. So I have this uh, equation here. Again, I need to solve for a and b to figure out what my um, partial fractions are going to be. And there's a couple different techniques. Probably the easiest technique is just to pick convenient values uh, for x. So the first value for x that I'm going to use is 3. And the reason I pick 3 is because when I plug it in over here, this is going to be 0, so my b is going to cancel out. So when I have x is equal to 3, I have 11. So 3 plus 8 is equal to uh, 5a. It's 3 plus 2, 5a, which means that a is going to be 11 fifths. And then a convenient value for x again would be negative 2 because then my first term over here would cancel out. So plugging in negative 2, I've got 6 is equal to negative 5b, which means that b is going to be negative 6 fifths. So now that I have these values for a and b, I'm going to go ahead and substitute them back in to my partial fractions here. So a is 11 fifths, so it's 11 fifths over x minus 3 plus, well, we'll just make it minus since it's negative here, minus 6 fifths x plus 2, and we'll just simplify a little bit. Um, our, we'll make our final answer 11 over 5 times x minus 3 minus 6 over 5 times x plus 2. So this would be our partial fraction decomposition. So it seems like a long process. Uh, once you go through it a few times, um, you shouldn't have too much difficulty. Uh, why don't you go ahead and uh, pause the video and give uh, this next problem a try. And then when you uh, restart the video, I'll have the solution there for you so you can uh, see if you did it right. So pause now and give this one a try. Okay, so uh, hopefully you got uh, 3 over x plus 3 minus 2 over x plus 2. Um, sometimes you'll have these in a different order, uh, depending on where you put your um, factors and your denominator. But if you had this switched around, you would have negative 2 over x plus 2 plus 3 over x plus 3. Um, we want to factor our denominator to x plus 3 and x plus 2. And then when we... Um, get rid of those denominators by multiplying uh, through by uh, x um, 
squared plus 5x plus 6 factored out. Uh, we end up with this step here, and then picking our convenient values for x, uh, we get that b is negative 2 and a is 3, and then our last step we go ahead and substitute those back in. So if you had any trouble um, with the this first example, uh, make sure that you uh, get some help. And um, we will uh, see you in the uh, next video where we'll talk about uh, repeated linear factors. So we're going to get just a little bit more difficult. Uh, we'll see you next video.